There's a few specific reasons why I'm really excited to share this field watch from Kuo with you today. Number one, it's the first micro brand watch I found for under $300 that is 100% Japanese made from the movement, the crystal, the case, everything 100% made in Japan. Secondly, it's the size. If you have a smaller wrist, you should be leaning in right now. 35 millimeter in diameter, I think is a very underrepresented part of the market today. Thirdly, it's kind of a selfish reason, but this is the first watch to be sent into the channel for review for free. So thank you to Kuo for trusting me with your watch. I don't have to send it back to them. That's why you see that little paid promotion. It's just a big milestone for the channel. So thank you to Kuo. And let's check out this field watch immediately. We're judging it by three pieces of criteria today. What I consider the most important parts of a field watch. Is it durable? Is it legible? And is it simple? Timestamps down below too, so if you want to jump around to a specific section, but the specifications are as follows, a 35 millimeter diameter watch, just 42 millimeters lug to lug, that is a signed screw down crown, a gorgeous domed mineral glass crystal makes this 12 and a half millimeters thick and the lug width is 18 millimeters, making this a really compact watch that will be at home on a very wide array of wrists. I'll show it to you on my wife's wrist in just a few minutes. You really will see how dynamic this watch really can be. The design, gorgeous. Even if not 100% original, definitely an homage to the military watches of the European theater around World War II. The most closely resembled watch I could find is from Smith's, a gorgeous watch, so I do not blame Kuo, but I do think Kuo has added enough modern flair to make it their own as well. So, the three pieces of criteria. Is it legible? Is it durable? And is it simple? Let's start with legibility, and the quick answer is yes. My god, is this watch legible, especially this colorway. So, there are a few different ones to choose from. There's a green, a navy, a black, and then this cream dial. I think especially in the daylight, this cream dial is quite possibly the most legible watch I own, even at its smaller size of 35 millimeters. Everything except for the three has an Arabic numeral, and not only is this contrast just so legible, but if you can see, these numerals are all applied. I will be bringing in lots of different shots so you can definitely see it because it really does take specific angles to check it out, but these are not thickly painted on, printed on. These are applied numerals, which I think is a fantastic touch. Also the hands, nice and big, especially that minute hand reaching all the way out to that track. So normal light situations, I cannot see any issues telling the time. The loom, we will get to it a little bit later. Perhaps nighttime vision would be a little bit different, but again, that loom shot you can check out in just a few minutes or just skip ahead if you're being a little impatient. The second question is, is it durable? Well, let's investigate. And also let's define what durable means. Number one, the case should definitely be considered durable, stainless steel all around. Also, the water resistance makes this a very durable watch. A screw down crown adds to the durability and this is a hundred meters of water resistance. I'm unscrewing the crown now, so I might as well show you that it hacks, even though that has nothing to do with durability. This is an NH35 inside. As mentioned in the intro, it is 100% Japanese made, so no surprises there. The only knock I could give it for durability is the mineral crystal. Sapphire obviously would be more durable, more scratch resistant. With mineral glass, you are going to get some scratches along the way if you use and wear this watch the way it was meant to be used and worn. Honestly, I would probably have preferred a acrylic crystal if we're not going to go for sapphire so we could buff out any upcoming scratches with poly watch. The mineral glass, definitely the hardest to deal with scratches. However, I've had this watch for about three weeks. Not exactly a long period of time, but I have not come across any crystal scratches as of yet. Thirdly, is this watch simple? I do believe field watches should be little more than tools, if not only a tool. And how are we going to figure that out? Because, I mean, the dial is definitely simple, right? Just Arabic numerals all around. An added complication that could make it a little less simple would be the date at the three. I have had a few comments on the unboxing of this video mentioning that people would be interested in a no date version of this watch. 
Currently, there is no no date version, just this version with the date at three. For me, I'm a date guy. I love having the date on watches, even on simple field watches. So my answer for my personal taste is yes, this watch is simple. So how does this stack up as an excellent field watch? Well, for legibility for me, in daylight, it is 10 out of 10. We'll get to the loom shot in a minute so we can judge it as far as how it would be at night. For simplicity, I would give it about an 8 out of 10. There are a few added details like that date complication, like the sign crown, that might take it out of pure tool watch for some people. For me, though, again, it doesn't really complicate the dial for me to have a date wheel, and I actually prefer it. So an 8 out of 10 might actually get bumped up to a 9 out of 10 for me because that date really doesn't complicate it much. And how about durability? Well, I give that about a 7.5 out of 10. The only knock that will come up in the negatives is that mineral glass crystal. That's the only thing that keeps this from being a beat the hell out of it whenever you want watch just because you will be getting some scratches on that crystal that will be tough to get out. But 100 meters of water resistance I wouldn't ask for more from a field watch. Also that screw down crown definitely adds to the peace of mind. So really a very durable, very legible, and very simple watch, which all things are pointing towards two thumbs up. Let's touch on the negatives. There are just a few to cover. The first, as mentioned earlier, is the mineral glass crystal. I would prefer anything but mineral. Give me acrylic, give me sapphire, but I don't really like the in-between because it would be a little bit tough to get rid of the scratches. That being said, gorgeous dome, and you know I love a dome. Also, it's not the best at night, and that is an issue. The hands are loomed, as are the indices, but let's transfer over to a loom shot now, and you'll see exactly what I mean. The hands definitely are glowing better than the indices, but especially when you bring in a watch like the SKX, there is no comparison. So I have worn this watch for about a week and a half, and at any time during the day, I can look down at it and easily tell what time it is. But at home, even just like in dusk hours, looking at the watch while I'm on the couch, it can get a little bit difficult. The loom does not glow as well as some of my other watches, especially like this dive watch. And the cream and the yellow of the hands can get lost in those dusk hours or those nighttime hours. So legibility at night goes down from a 10 out of 10 to about a 6 out of 10. Lastly, I do like their straps. I've been keeping it mostly on this black NATO. It has an extra little accent of these brown keepers. And this olive strap also came with the watch. They send you a free strap when you order. They're just not the most comfortable straps. They are a little bit rougher and not the most comfortable especially because unfortunately for me and my seven and a quarter inch wrist, I came like just in between two holes. So either it's too tight for me or just too loose. And this is a rougher NATO strap. So at home in the outer doors for sure. But if you're just kind of lounging around the house, at least for me, I found myself wanting a smoother NATO strap, a more comfortable NATO strap. Like for instance, this Haviston seatbelt strap I'm wearing with the SKX. And lastly, this is very nitpicky, but it does say mechanical down here above the six. Technically, this is an automatic watch. It's a Seiko NH35 in the back. So it's an automatic hand winding hacking movement. So it is mechanically windable, but if you want to get technical, this is an automatic watch, not a mechanical watch. That being said, though, I know there's been a lot made of how many watches have an NH35 in the back, how ubiquitous it is, how almost boring it is. But this watch, I think, is the watch to have one, if any watch would have one. The fact that this is 100% Japanese made, I think, is excellent, especially at the price, 268 US dollars. Also, this is not a Kickstarter watch. This is not a pre-order watch. You can buy this watch today, which I think is excellent. How many micro brands either have a short burst of sales and then it's going to be gone for either ever or for years or months, you can buy this watch right now. And I'll mention one more time, there is a discount code, a 5% off, which I do believe 
is the only discount code in existence for this watch, which I also am very, very proud of. And as mentioned, we really need to show a few different wrist shots to show you the flexibility of this watch from Kuo. So my wife has about a five and a quarter inch wrist. And as you see, it fits pretty well on her wrist. Also on my wrist, I am obviously much bigger. I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist. And while I do think 35 millimeters for me is the lowest end of the size spectrum, I do think it looks very much at home on my larger wrist as well. So thanks so much for hanging out with me again today. Thanks again to Kuo for sending me this watch. And I'm going to add this at the end. I do believe this is a YouTube exclusive. There are maybe one or two unboxing videos out there, but this is the first full review of this Kuo Old Smith watch. And I'm very, very happy to be able to present it to you. New videos every week on this channel. If you enjoyed this video, a subscription really does help. And you can hit that bell icon below if you want to get notified the next time a video is up. I try to do at least two videos every week. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.